yeah, the uh, the American film market, I don't believe is is directly affiliated with any organization other than the Independent Film and Television Alliance, which okay. I don't, I have no idea whether they're part of the other one that I don't want to say wrong. Um, okay. the uh, but yeah, most of the people at Independent at AFM are way 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 smaller. Yes, exactly. Struck, um. But once you get, I mean, like, once you get the basics of it, it becomes a lot easier to do the rest of it. There's also some things around confidence and body language and just, but in reality, really what it comes down to is managing your own mindset and figuring out what you need to be able to feel up to putting yourself out there all day. And that's right. not an easy- Coffee. Easy, coffee. Lots of that. Yeah. Lots that's of coffee. The, um, I, I... I have cut back on the Red Bull massively. <laughs> Not fun. <laughs> Damn it. Um, but the uh, but I make a massive exception at markets. I have like so much. Unless okay, if I'm at Con or EFM, I drink the coffee there because it's better. Yes. <laughs> it's just <laughs> But yeah, it's um. But if I'm at like AFM, I'm probably bringing my own Red Bull. Right, it's uh right. yeah. Um, you stay there the whole entire time. Huh? Do you stay there the whole entire time? Depends on the market. Um, AFM, and also depends if I'm boothing. Yeah, because they're expensive. It's uh, right. They're like just in booth rental if you actually get an office as opposed to just a shared thing at afm and i, I know yeah. it for a fact like thousands gonna... ends yeah it's, it's nuts it's and you basically can't waste a, se- a second because you have right. to make your money back and i actually for a while did not when i was running mutiny we didn't really charge market expenses because we were online and it was pandemic right if i were doing it now i'd probably charge market expenses because you have to otherwise you can't run a business right it's um but the problem with that is that so many distributors massively and and sales agents too massively abuse those expenses so that instead of the uh if they have a $15 $15 vodka cranberry, which is about right at AFM. Um, right. They're going to charge that to every single one of their films, not across their entire slate. And oh, that's wow. not good. Um, and that's, yeah, that's not something I ever did, but I know it exists and I know it still happens. It's and just. You- yeah, do 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 producers get breakdowns of these expenses? It, um, it, only under audit. Okay. Generally, you don't get an actual expense breakdown per the market. Interesting. Um, okay. It's a. I think there's wisdom to it, to actually doing the whole thing, and I I, I just kind of think you you avoid so many problems if you just are transparent about right. it from the beginning. Um. Right. But that's not, and that view is becoming more common. To the be transparency, clear. the transparency is it's more than it was when I started doing this. But it might just be that I'm dealing with the right people now too. Right. So it's there's that, but there are definitely still some sharks out there. And and I I yeah, that's the thing that I'm learning about you know LA is like I don't know how to distinguish the sharks, which I I think it's very interesting that you bring this up because I am reading a book something something how to swim with sharks without getting bit, mm-hmm. which because I'm trying to teach myself those sales skills that mm-hmm. I have no clue about, you know, so all this stuff about you know like. Uh, tightening the the pitch to under 20 seconds like i i know a little bit of that but i don't have an experiential knowledge of it or like how all of that works because there are a lot of sharks in hollywood and if you don't know you don't know what you don't know and then Mm -hmm. you get taken advantage of i mean it's 
I already did one podcast on the strikes. I probably didn't right. shouldn't do one that entirely focuses that again. Right. But it is to illustrate that point. There was a studio head that, to the best of my knowledge, is still unnamed, although we all have an assumption of who it was. Um, Detective work. (laughs) Yes. um, We actively, who actively said, yeah, our goal here is to just wait them out, let them become homeless so they have no bargaining position. And it's like, that, I've dealt with some skeezy people for uh negotiations and red lines but that's a whole different level of awful and it's i it's just not how i choose to do things um at all um in general when i'm negotiating or even when there's a dispute starting Mm -hmm. my rule of thumb is uh First, assume it was a mistake. Um, Second, assume the person... And and until you can't assume their mistakes anymore. Then, assume the person you're dealing with is incompetent. Um, And once that doesn't make sense anymore, only then assume malice. Basically, assume that they are actively trying to screw you over. Assume that they are bad faith. But once you cross into that malice phase with somebody, you kind of always need to assume that they're acting in bad faith and really? move on. It's like you. It takes a for me. It takes a while to get there. But once somebody has proven themselves to be a bad faith actor, once I'm not saying cut them out and never deal with them again, but assume that they're likely to do it again, and that's. Right how you game that out it, for at least how i game it out um, yeah I, i'm trying to learn how to not trust what people say trust more of their actions and even more so their patterns mm-hmm. um, because yeah there's there's a couple of things that have happened and are you know possibly happening that i just i don't i don't understand people's intent because they're so nice sometimes but then things that that they do don't seem nice Mm -hmm. so and that's one of the things about LA that I'm like learning and that was sad to learn is that people that it are nice aren't necessarily kind or you know or have the best intent they could just be very very nice (laughs) they could be very so yeah um nice sounding I should say yeah I the best way i've ever heard it put was in la the way you know you're about to get fucked over is when someone says trust me Mm. i mean i know i know Mm. and it's not a universal rule but it is you have to keep in mind that there's a reason that that somewhat sarcastic story exists it's or cliche it's not a story i don't know what it is yeah Um, cliche cliche um but the and i know that's hard to deal with because i i like dealing with people at face value as much as possible which is why oh i mean it's just go ahead I'm not good at negotiating, you know, like I am so like, I, I just want like, even at car things or, you know, how some, some people like going to like the bazaars and like doing the haggling thing. Mm -hmm. I am not one of those people. I'm just like, here's the thing. This is, you know, what I can do it for, or this is what I can sell it for, whatever it is, whether the buyer or seller part of it, that's the thing. You know? that's turned that would be generally termed as good faith negotiation that's what that is and it's a much happier world when you're dealing yeah. in good faith negotiation but unfortunately there's a lot of times where you just have to understand that you're not dealing in that world it's just a exactly. it's um and it sucks a lot and, and i'm i'm i you know i'm learning you know i'm learning things very in you know to be very vague very difficultly you know yeah yeah it's that one took me a while too to be honest and i 
was chided many times for being too forthright on certain pieces of information but yeah um, and i don't know how to navigate that just yet you know like it's it's very it's very it's a very strange world so yeah i mean what are okay so so now this is the 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 thing is curtailing to this way um what are the green flags uh and red flags of dealing with you know just film people in general whether it's distributors or financiers or whatever you know there are some specific contract provisions that i always like seeing and if i see those um i am i'm still gonna read the whole thing and make sure i understand it (laughs) Right. But I'm I but if I see certain key clauses, I'm going to read it a lot less harshly. Um, but conversely, there are certain deal terms that get put into things that I will just walk away rather than redline it. It's um and there are certain when things fall out of certain parameters on their first offer you just have to kind of assume that even if you get the paper where it needs to be Mm -hmm. enforcing that paper is going to be extremely difficult and it's going to be something that and once your film has been exploited by a uh distributor even if they're a good distributor and exploited meaning the financial term not okay yeah um but the once you once your film is out there, nobody's going to pay you even close to what it's worth, even if they were in the beginning. It's going to drop like 80%, even if you get wow. your film. And that's extremely problematic. So you have to be very careful when you get your first deal because your first deal is where pretty much all of your money is going to be made. And if you have to strip your rights back... At some point, you have to always, 100% of the time, well, not 100% of the time, there is a point where it makes sense to get your rights back and just put it up on Film Hub yourself. Right. But if it's already been out there through a major distributor, it's really hard to get an MG for it ever again. It's just, and it's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, like that's one of the first films that I did that was kind of that situation you know I'm just going to speak in generalities but Mm -hmm. um very niche film uh had some really good reviews at you know in these niche um you know markets you know for what it was right uh like really excellent reviews and we were super excited when it got signed by a distributor for worldwide worldwide rights um and yeah (laughs) ben's making quotation marks here this was our first this was was this was the first thing so you know naturally we're super excited right Mm -hmm. we have a distribution deal and it got sold uh for us and then we got the paper for japan and germany but we never saw any money and then no did you see money for us no Uh... and no and then no contact from there and then their their offices were in canada so it's not like we can you know go over there very you know very quickly and then any type of negotiation had to go through the you know whatever the negotiation thing is which would cost more money arbitration you mean yes ar- like yeah. but some kind of like arbitration i don't know i don't remember what it was yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, my, uh, partners got, just got the rights back, but evident, like, since it had already been exploited, it was like, yeah, you know, so it was like, uh, didn't, uh, did not learn, did, did not get a good deal on that one. <laughs> no, I mean, and honestly, the first time you do any sort of new transaction like that new acquisition to a distributor or even if you're an entrepreneur and selling your first tech company, whatever it is, everybody gets fucked over on the first deal. By the way, we're past the first 20 minutes. We've been for a while. Okay, um, good. So we can say fuck. <laughs> yes. um, the, uh, but no, nah, it's just a, I might have to mark this not for kids, but who cares? Okay. If, if there's a kid watching this. I know. 
<laughs> that kid is very much loving film and really wants to know all the things about film and will probably be like a Steven Spielberg someday. So, so yeah, I mean, and they'll figure out their way around that uh, YouTube age restriction. It's not that hard. Um, but the... Uh...